Great news, you're planning an early retirement. This is awesome, except now you have to deal with the complex and expensive world of healthcare. This is critical, since mistakes here could force you back to work, to live on a shoestring budget, or even bankrupt you. Once you're age 65, you can use Medicare, which is another complex beast. Until then, there are several options for healthcare. We're going to focus on the most viable option for most people, Affordable Care Act insurance. Afterwards, we'll look at a couple other options often discussed in the financial independence community, like moving abroad. The Affordable Care Act insurance is also called Obamacare. I'm going to refer to it as ACA. This was created in 2010. ACA insurance has several key features. You cannot be denied coverage. Your coverage cannot be revoked. There are clear out-of-pocket maximums and there are no lifetime limits. You have to enroll during the open enrollment period between November 1st and January 31st. You may qualify for a special enrollment outside this time frame if you lose your healthcare coverage, move, get married, or if you give birth or adopt a child. ACA insurance is purchased on your state's ACA exchange or the federal exchange if your state doesn't have one. Policies on the ACA exchange have metal categories, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. The major difference between these is how much you pay the medical providers directly or to the insurance company. Health insurance plans are complex and the costs and programs will vary by state. However, I'll show you how I'm comparing these plans for early retirement. We'll look at an example for a 50-year-old couple living near Seattle, Washington on $100,000 per year of income. I got these quotes from the Washington State Exchange for Kaiser Permanente's Cascade Bronze, Silver, and Gold plans. We don't have platinum plans in Washington. The first cost is the premium. As you go up in the metal level, you definitely pay the insurer more money in premiums. The next cost is your deductible, which you pay directly to the medical provider. Once you reach your deductible, you could have to pay up to the out-of-pocket max. After you hit this amount, your insurance will cover the rest for that year. Now this can be a little more complicated with copays and other scenarios where you may only have to pay a percentage of the coverage in some cases, but this is the total out-of-pocket maximum cost. There are a lot of factors that go into which plan will be best for you, like the providers you wanna see, how often you visit them, which prescriptions you take, and so on. The main point here is how much money do we need for healthcare in retirement? I consider the annual premium plus the max out of pocket as the worst case scenario. And that number is going to be similar regardless of which metal level you choose. It's a lot of money, around $27,000 per year for a 50 year old couple in the state of Washington. If you price the same plans for a 60 year old couple, they are about $7,000 more in total cost per year. This is a huge amount of money and reflects about 33% of this couple's income. If you're planning to use the 4% withdrawal rate for early retirement, this needs you would need about $875,000 just to cover the cost of medical at age 60. Or with a 3% withdrawal rate, it's $1.17 million. The withdrawal rate is just how much money you feel comfortable withdrawing from your portfolio each year. Some people suggest you can withdraw 4% per year and never run out of money, but 3% or possibly lower is a more conservative rate, especially for an early retiree. You might have to work several extra years just to be able to afford the worst case cost of healthcare. In some states, the costs are fixed regardless of your age, but this would just mean you pay more at age 50 in this example. So what can we do? 
Well, the ACA has subsidies available that you might be able to leverage. Subsidies are determined by your income, not by your assets. Since many retirees have lower incomes, you could qualify for a subsidy as a multimillionaire. The subsidy is based on how much your modified adjusted gross income compares to the federal poverty level, or FPL. The modified adjusted gross income will include your investment income unless you're withdrawing from a Roth account. It's basically the AGI or adjusted gross income from your tax return with a few items added back. I'll add a link below with details. For 2022, here is the chart for the FPL. For a family of two, you need at least $24,000 a year in income to get an ACA subsidy. Otherwise, it's assumed you will use Medicaid. You can qualify for the subsidy on almost up to $70,000 in income. Your maximum premium cost will be a percentage of your income. If you keep your income under 400% of FPL, the cost of premiums caps at 8.5% of your income. This subsidy can be applied to any metal level plan, so you could choose a higher level plan with a lower max out of pocket. Note, you will still be responsible for the out-of-pocket max. If you're under 250% of FPL, you could qualify for another subsidy, the cost-sharing reductions, which will lower deductibles on silver plans. You can strategically plan to qualify for or maximize these subsidies by taking income from a Roth, just spending cash or bond principal, and maybe even other tax loopholes. Rental properties are one possible loophole, as they can provide cash for you to spend that could be partially offset by depreciation. I could explain this in more detail if in another video if you're interested, but definitely consult a CPA to verify the details. If you strategically plan this, you could create a scenario where most if not all of your healthcare insurance is subsidized, even though your actual spending could be quite high. At the very least, if you even target 399% of FPL, you could fix your insurance premiums at 8.5% of your income and go into a higher metal level plan. This would also cap your costs as you age, as long as your income stays the same since you wouldn't have to pay the extra in premium since it's capped at a percentage of your income. This could get in the way of a Roth conversion ladder, but it might be a better deal for you. Some people will argue it's unethical for multimillionaire early retirees to take the subsidy. I see this as no different than any other tax break. Is it unethical to take a mortgage interest deduction, a child tax credit, or even to contribute to a Roth? Even with the ACA subsidy at 399% of FPL, we are still talking about roughly $16,500 per year in possible healthcare costs. This is half the cost than we were talking about at age 60 before. However, it's still $412,500 using the 4% safe withdrawal rate and $550,000 at 3%. A lot of people say this and they say, that's it. I'm leaving the US and going somewhere else where healthcare isn't so expensive. However, we have to properly set expectations. First, not every country wants you. Second, healthcare is still going to be expensive, but it is probably cheaper outside the US. If you move to a country where the government runs healthcare, you will likely pay high income tax and maybe even a wealth tax. Third, there is a lot of overhead in uprooting your whole life, learning a new culture, systems, and possibly a language. This could still be a great adventure or option for you to retire earlier. I've investigated some of these options and Portugal seems like one of the best. They want early retirees to relocate there and they even provide a 10 year tax incentive. My wife and I recently visited and it's a great country. I estimate our costs would be about 65% of 
of what they are here near Seattle, but only in the first 10 years. After that tax break expires, I think our costs could actually be higher. Your numbers may be different. So this is the first option if you wanna move abroad. You could find a country that will let you move there that has good government healthcare. Another option, if you're willing to move abroad, is expat insurance. Expat insurance provides global health insurance coverage. If you live outside the US for more than six months of the year, you could buy expat insurance. It can even cover you while you're in the US as long as you're only in the country for under six months. Here is a comparison of the ACA policies to the quote I got from Cigna for an expat policy that includes coverage in the US. These policies have a wide range of deductibles and copays. The platinum level covers most healthcare, even dental and vision benefits, but they don't necessarily cover everything. Silver and gold have some limits on annual doctor visits, and there are just some caps on certain types of coverage. These policies are supposedly guaranteed to be renewable once you have them, but may increase in price as you age. You can look at the details and see if they match your risk level. For example, let's say you spend five and a half months in the US, five and a half months in Portugal, and one month traveling. You could still be near friends and family in the US for half the year. You could enjoy a lower cost of living in Portugal without being a tax resident. The savings on the medical costs alone could cover a second home in Portugal. Now that we've discussed overseas options, there are a couple others that some people will use in the US. First are healthcare sharing groups. Most of these groups are faith-based, requiring that you be an active member of a church. The way that these groups work is they are similar to insurance, but they are not insurance. They often have lifetime limits on coverage of around $1 million. They aren't regulated as well as insurance companies, so who knows how solvent they will be in the future. Even though they have lower monthly payments, the total maximum pocket could be comparable to an ACA plan. I just wouldn't be comfortable banking on lower cost healthcare sharing groups carrying me through a 25 year early retirement until Medicare. While a lot can change, even with ACA plans, I think these have more risk. Regardless to each their own, these could be a reasonable solution for some people. The final options are short-term options. These aren't viable long-term, but could work to cover several months or possibly a couple years. First is COBRA, which is keeping the health insurance from your prior employer. You can keep the insurance for up to 18 months, but you have to pay the entire cost of the plan plus an admin fee. Another option is known as indemnity plans or short-term insurance or Trump care. These are typically limited in duration. They can only be used for a few months in some states or possibly a couple years in others. They can also drop you if you develop a health condition. These options could bridge a small gap to Medicare or ease the transition to another plan. If it wasn't complicated enough, there are possibly more options that apply to fewer people or aren't as viable, like agricultural farm plans, self-employment plans, or student plans. I have not included these in the interest of time. Due to politics, there is the risk that whatever plan we come up with, it could get pulled out from under us. But we have to plan with the information we have. This is a lot to take in, and there are definitely more complexities than I communicated here. We can only go into so much detail in a short video. Make sure to do your own research and compare how costs change as you age. Let me know which option you think is best for you in the comments below. Make sure to smash the like button if you got value from this video. Later.